Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to a beautiful day here in New York. Uh, if you didn't see last week's video, I'm here for a few days. I'm driving around this new Maserati Gran Turismo. Uh, today, I've got a bit of a free day. So I messaged my friend Harrison and said, look, what can we do? And he went, well, leave it to me. I'm gonna fill your diary with a load of cool car stuff. And he's dropped me a pin for a location about 25 minutes from here. And he said, look, just get there and your jaw will hit the floor. So I'm intrigued, I'm excited, I'm a little bit nervous, but yeah, here we go for a big car day out in New York. Now, if you're not into your Porsches, this video is not gonna be for you because yeah. <laughs> If this is a sign of what's to come today, well, I'm going to really like today. I actually don't know where we're going throughout today. Each stop is going to be a bit of a surprise, but, but the first surprise is a very, very good one. Welcome to the private collection of Joe Busetta, who was a famous Porsche racing driver back in the 1960s. I've heard a tour of this place from his grandson, James, and, and I've learned about the quite incredible cars lurking behind me. As I say, even if you're not into Porsches, you're going to want to check these things out because they're some of the most important Porsche race cars of all time, but just important race cars of all time. And they give us a real insight into how fast car and race car development was back in the 60s. Come and check these out. So starting off at the beginning, we have the little 904. I love these things. You see them often racing at Goodwood Revival. I think this is such a good looking car and that's because it was kind of meant to be a bit of a road car. And you can see how this would be a very desirable road car, but it was also super competitive in racing. And actually this car in 1964 got Porsche's first win at the Targa Florio, which is an event just like the Mille Emilia. It actually happens down in Sicily and Italy. It's something I've always wanted to go and do or at least retrace the steps of. It is a historic uh, event now, so I could go and do it like I did the Mille Emilia in my 360, but I just want to go down there maybe with my GT3 and celebrate the whole Porsche tie-in as well. But anyway, I'm getting carried away with my own narrative. Let's focus on the narrative of the car, because yes, this thing's super important in Porsche's racing history. Uh, it then ended up in Joe's hands in 1966, went on to have a huge success over here in America. And actually, the car was represented in the Ford versus Ferrari movie, the Christian Bale and Matt Damon film, uh, because it was successful here at Daytona and Sebring and things like that. So yeah super cool to see in its kind of yeah livery that, that joe raced it in just just a beautiful pretty little car uh moving on though we come on to the 906 which looks way more race car right you can tell from here to here things are getting fairly serious and it's only one year's different in terms of well joe getting his hands on that he raced this 1967. um the things i want to point out about this well first look at this you've got little sort of you know little canards at the front but check out these front fenders because they're absolutely massive if i come down here to the front you can see that the driver who was sitting down there right down there would barely been able to see over these huge fenders so racing i mean at the end of the day you're just looking forward aren't you but i mean close combat racing must have been a little bit interesting or, or looking for where curbs or hay bales or small animals uh, were been tough to do um but yeah loads of things going on look at the intakes there on the side it's just very much as i say racing compared to sort of road car that you could race uh, then we move on the 910 again one year later huge differences again this is what's insane the development is so rapid so i just mentioned those high fenders they're all gone here the year later because big changes came in wheel design uh back in the 907 uh, sorry 906 days we still had these massive steel wheels which were 15 inches it kind of explains well partly explains why these fenders were so high but a year later for the 910 we've got little 13 inch magnesium wheels with center locks which we're now so familiar with, with even cars like a 911 GTS. But, you know, this was the, the origins and it was to aid quick wheel changes or tire changes during races. This whole, this tiny, this little car, it's absolutely amazing. If you come and look in the, uh, in the cockpit, in the cabin, you'll see just how bare it is. And, you know, we talk about bucket seats now, and that is literally a bucket with some lining on it. That's where the expression comes from. Even the steering wheel, it just looks flimsy. I mean, you are dead if you crash this thing. The people who race these things, like Joe, which is so, brave in the era it's wild to see uh, and speaking of wild we then have to move on we've got a 907 here eight cylinder uh, 907 so this was all about big speeds and big 
power. So these cars sort of had iterations of the of the 911 road car engine. Obviously, you know, proper motorsport versions. Was this thing was a real race car engine, uh, and the whole car was supposed to be slippery, aiming towards higher top speeds of getting close to 200 miles an hour. Things like Le Mans and things like that. They were just trying to compete with the big boys, um, even though it was a sort of you know class below. I guess you would consider this maybe the LMP2 uh, of its day, um, but still super competitive, always punching above its weight. And really interesting developments for this car. This right here is an is an ice box to aid with driver cooling. So they'd literally just throw ice in that box. And theoretically, on a long stint, like a three hour stint, uh, it would help cool down the driver. I'm not sure it worked that well, um, but it was an interesting idea. And you can see that they were thinking of just maximizing performance, not just of the car, but of the driver. And then finally, we come on to, well, this is the 908, which was uh, not raced in period by Joe in this sort of form. Well, actually, I think it was, but his big success uh, came with the coupe uh, long tail version, which you can see there are pictures of it dotted around. It had a big victory at Monza, and then it was converted into this kind of this flounder spec, this open cabin car, because it just, you know, you can race this and use this in more places, that long tail car, a bit like the McLaren F1 GTR long tail, bit of a pig, uh, <laughs> hard to maneuver. Uh, this thing is still raced. Oh, I think it was raced till very recently because it's just so competitive and uh, as time went on and different regulations changed that thing was just always a go-to for Porsche racing enthusiasts so yes look as I'm walking back along this line all of the pictures behind I mean it's just absolutely wild as I said I realize maybe a little bit niche you know these are very old Porsche cars and some of you are going to be like oh bore off show me a Koenigsegg but well, you're wrong because these are amazing to see oh and I didn't even mention the quite mad road cars that are in here as well but we, we haven't got time for that this is mind-boggling yeah pretty good way to start the day um, Harrison's been talking quite a big game over the last few weeks in the build-up for this day and he's delivered straight out of the box uh, um, and and things are really only gonna get madder because he just said to me, let's get you out of that Italian shed, referring to this Maserati. I find that rude because I really like this car, uh, but he doesn't seem impressed. He said, let's, let's get you in a Porsche. So, you know, the, the Porsche thing is going to continue, which I'm not going to complain about because if I'm not in an Italian shed, I'm usually in a Porsche. So yeah, either way, I'm happy. But I think I'm going to be extra happy because we're off now to pick up or to put me in a Porsche that's so rare, I've never actually even seen one before. It's going to need a little bit of explanation for you to understand just how special it is. But for those of you that know about it, you're going to be like, what the hell? For those of you that don't, the spec is special enough. <laughs> this is, oh, I need to come to New York more often. I need to hang out with Harrison more often. I'm just going to quickly interrupt things because epic adventures like this one to New York wouldn't be possible without regular supporters and partners of this channel. And one of my regular partners is of course NordVPN who have very kindly sponsored this part of the video. You would have heard me talk about NordVPN before because well as I say firstly they are a regular partner but also I've been using it for like seven or eight years. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. It ensures your safety and your security when you go online traveling as much as I do, moving around as much as I do, and living my life online like I do, means that I'm endlessly logging on to random Wi-Fi networks, in airports, on the airplane, in hotels, in car dealerships, etc. And when I do that, I never know who might be looking at or even trying to steal my information. And I can't afford for my information to be stolen, one of my social media accounts to be hacked. So by having NordVPN active on all of my devices, it's up like a virtual wall between me and those dodgy people out there who might be prying a look at what I'm getting up to. Over and above that, NordVPN allows you to enjoy your favorite content when you're on the move. So for example, whilst I was in New York, it was the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix because the F1 season is back. So I was able to set my location to the UK and enjoy my favorite F1 coverage whilst also filming videos like this one for all of you. So if you're moving around a lot, if you're endlessly living your life online, or you want to enjoy your favorite Netflix shows whilst you're on holiday, I recommend you check out NordVPN. Use my new link, yes, it's a new link, nordvpn.com forward slash stglass. That's nordvpn.com forward slash stglass. When you sign up for two years, you'll get four months free. It's well worth checking out. And as I say, whatever you're gonna do, get a VPN in place. And in my mind, NordVPN continues to be the best. Anyway, 
let's get back to New York. There's a lot to talk about here. Um, yeah, there's, yeah, a lot going on. Uh, but let's stick to the Porsche story for a moment because we were just looking at some of Porsche's greatest racing cars from the 1960s. Back then, everything was, was great. Everything was rosy for Porsche. But move forward a few decades to the early 90s and well, things weren't going so well. Actually, things were looking pretty disastrous. There was a chance Porsche was about to go bankrupt. But there, there was hope. They were going to come out with the 993 generation 911, so 94, 95. And they thought, you know, maybe that will save us. But before then, we've got to sell some cars because if we don't, we're in trouble. And they had like 93 964 911 chassis knocking around. They were like, just do something with these because otherwise, well, yeah, Hans isn't getting paid. <laughs> um, so they turned to the Sonderwunsch department, the special wishes department, because at that time, it was one of the few departments that was able to be truly profitable said, guys, come on, look, we've got these 93 chassis. What can we do? Can we not do something special with them? So the Porsche exclusive guys scratched their heads. They thought, oh, maybe. Uh, they had previously had a go. They'd made a Turbo S lightweight uh, a few years beforehand. Then they made the 964 Speedster. So they're like, well, we could try something different. How about we do a final send-off version, the ultimate road-going turbo with the bigger 3.6 litre, which was now in the standard turbo, not the smaller 3.3 litre. And then we'll add a little bit extra juju specialness and then sell it for a huge premium. That huge premium was about 20%. So the, yeah, the 3.6 litre turbo S, about a 20% premium on the $100,000 turbo. But then they went, hmm. I feel like there's one more thing we could offer people just, just to give us a chance to, to make some moolah. And that was to bring back one of their most popular sort of special modifications, the slant nose, something which hadn't been seen since the previous generation, the 930 911. So they offered as an additional 60% premium, the ability to have a slant nose on your 3.6 Turbo S. Unsurprisingly, 70 odd of the 93 orders were for flat bow slant nose cars and somehow behind me are two of them <laughs> yes like i was teasing earlier exceptionally rare i actually had never seen or even heard of one of these cars until harrison mentioned it a few weeks ago so I'm kind of pinching myself that I can have the chance to drive this thing. It's absolutely wild. Huge shout out to Ryan Friedman Cars because, well, all of this <laughs> is their stock or cars that they've recently sold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to have a look at it all in a moment before we hit the road. But yeah, there's so much more to discuss about these 3.6 Turbo S flat bows. They're very special in the history of Porsche, but also fundamentally and theoretically incredible cars. But we're going to learn about that when we head out onto the road. And this blue car, the spec. Oh! If I was ever to order another Porsche, I'm just gonna mirror that. We'll come on to it in a moment though. Let me firstly show you some of the insane stuff knocking around in the background. So we've got a black GT3 RS 4 litre with wait for it European viewers. Comfort seats. <laughs> I've generally never seen a four litre with this with the standard sports seats not the buckets apparently this is quite common in america because they couldn't homologate they couldn't get the the buckets oh, sorry the roll cage in the back not everyone went for the buckets but uh yeah in europe that's i feel like a an unusual thing to see but maybe not as unusual as a paint to sample four liter this car finished in pastel orange in this sunlight unreal like just unreal but arguably the winner for me is this one of one green and tan SLS. I mean, I love the SLS on most days of the week. I actually would like to sell a kidney to buy this thing. Let me just show you this interior because when I say tan, you don't appreciate the tan until I reveal it to you. Oh my God, this interior is spectacular. I mean, this car is spectacular. Sadly, sold. For, for quite a lot of money um, and off to a big enthusiast but that's so special uh, as is the 911R stunning to see we've also got a 3RS uh, 997.2 3RS and a 991RS as well but back to the main shows because yes these are the flat bows this car in black beautiful to see and actually if you ignore the slant nose at the front it's got those side intakes which now have become so familiar with painted ducktail etc but let me come over to this blue car because yeah not only is the exterior stunning come and look at this interior which i just think 
is <gasps> absolutely gorgeous. So here we go, rolling out then in the midnight blue with cobalt blue leather and then this kind of blue tartan interior. There's wood in here as well. Oh, this trim is just spectacular. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous because this car is worth a lot of money. But I'm going to have some time to figure this thing out as the day goes on. Everyone keeps telling me that the boost kicks in at about 4,000 RPM, so I've got to watch out for that. But uh, first things first, we're heading on to the next stop in Harrison's wild tour of New York car culture, somewhere called Universal Autosports. So we'll head there, and then I guess a little bit later, once we've been to all of these wild locations, we'll spend some time with this thing out on the road. But. Oh, you know what the weirdest thing is? Firstly, it's so nice in here, but I don't have the iconic 911 front fenders. You know, the kind of bubbles in front of me, it just slopes away. So it's a bit weird. I know I'm in a 911, but then I'm like, oh no, but where are they? Anyway, this is, this is, this is so special. So yeah, welcome in. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's all I need to see. Boys and girls, yes, an actual FXX. This is, Harrison, what is going on here? <laughs> what, what is going on here? Uh, yes, and this has been on track several times with the new owner. It's, <gasps> this thing is well used and it's incredible. So what I never understood is I thought Ferrari didn't let these cars out of their sights. I thought you had to call them up and say, I want my FXX car <laughs> delivered to Monza or to wherever. That's what I thought too, but I guess, I guess. This I one. guess if you're really rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I love about these cars is look, no tail lights, just exhaust pipes. <laughs> um, and the anything? yellow is, I mean, that's, what a cool thing to have in your shop just up on a rack like that. I mean, it's casual 458 race car below it. Got an SL65. This place is heaven. <gasps> just wait till you see these two. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I've already seen them. I've already seen them. What is going on over here? I mean, you two gated Stradales. A gated. Hint, a little hint at the future. Gated. Oh, they're both conversions. I mean, look at the <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great plate. Oh, look at the white wheels. My God. So, this is our friend Barrett's. Okay. Getting a full brand new interior. So, if you look at this, it's fully stripped out. And the interior is actually over there. It's going to be all black and then blue seats nice in okay matching like a 250 gt yeah that's a great like look a i love it a blue interior on a ferrari is right exactly. up my street i keep going places and people keep trying to show me manually converted stradales <laughs> it's it's getting a little bit overwhelming at this it's, stage it's just it's a sign for sure <laughs> and the silver car silver car is very nice as well so I love. also uh manual converted mm -hmm. and then this one's also getting a brand new interior okay <laughs> Like ironically, yeah, that's going to be full navy blue. Oh, nice! Uh, Silver and blue is also a great oh, Ferrari. So nice. Three five five is very nice. Yeah, there's so a lot these of are nice a couple bits. Race cars getting restored. Yeah, they they do everything here. Yeah, I can see. Well, I uh, hey look, and they even have Maseratis. Come on! Exactly. I'll win you every by the end of the day. I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Testarossa. Yeah, so they do the full engine out here. Everything, everything, and then this is a. Uh, Freshly converted to manual uh, 575. Very oh cool. no! Oh mate, I love All 575. Insane. They're such pretty cars. Yeah, there you go. I uh, see now. I think a 575 manual 100% for me. Like that's yeah, a proper a, grand, grand tour. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's so nice. Another stunning color. This place is so cool. And yeah, it's kind of nondescript from the outside. You wouldn't realize. And then even in here. So stuff is just scattered everywhere, but it's kind of amazing stuff. I mean, the race cars are proper, legit race cars as well. These aren't things that you should just completely knock and disappear. And then also, the stuff up their here. trucks are out at uh, Circuit of America in Texas. Okay. So they're going to be coming back. They have brand new 296 race cars that will be back wow. next week. It's wow. insane. But that thing, that has to steal the show. Yeah, it's I mean, okay, a, a room full of amazing Porsche race cars. You put me in an amazing Porsche and then take me to a room full of amazing Ferrari race cars. Exactly. Where are we going to a Formula One race next? Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that would be fun. Well, I'll wait to see what you deliver. But yeah, people, what do you think about this place? Universal Autosports, absolutely wild. 
think the mm, that Stradali. No, the FXX is the winner. <laughs> I mean, this looks like more of a dealership than a collection. Harrison has brought me on to the next stop. And as you can see, it is an endless array of, well, Porsches and Ferraris. It does not get much better than this. I mean, let's just kick start right here. 997.2 GT2 RS flanked or, 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 or in front of a 991.2 2 RS. That is a mad matching pair with both with the red and black interior. I mean, I just, I honestly, every time I look up from the camera, I spot something else. Check out this 430 Scud with a very custom stripe. I have never seen a car. Is that a, oh my God, it's a painted stripe. So that's a factory stripe. I've never seen a bespoke stripe like that. Right next to the stunning 16M. We've got a 4RS. Uh, this is quite interesting. That's one of those crazy 70th anniversary Cali T is a weird spec, but that will be celebrating some kind of race car. Oh, there's a Super America over there. Let's go and check that out. Um, and by the way, I'm probably walking past things that you really care about, but I'm just seeing whatever catches my eye. Love a Super America, not as much as I love a 550 Barchetta, which is basically my next dream Ferrari. We've got a Pista Spider, Pista Pelotti, 812 GTS. <gasps> it's a Hurricane Storato. That's one, there's a Super Mega, there's a TDF. Oh my God, people, I am freaking out. It is lit, this is, this is basically what my garage would look like. If I suddenly had loads of money, it's all just, it's an 812 Competizione, I wasn't even noticing that. It's all Ferraris and Porsches. This is amazing. Testarossa here, another 812 GTS. We've got an SF90 Spider, Lamborghini Ultimate, and oh. 911R with the sort of unique bespoke stripes. I think the 911R gets overlooked so often with the silver seat belts as well. What a thing, a load of amazing bikes. Unfortunately, my bike knowledge is pretty lacking, so I'm gonna have to skip past those, but what an amazing lineup. They've got the exhaust extractor fans going on at the back, which is maybe, oh my God, I didn't even look at the GTO. Oh, it's just non-stop. There's too much to look at. The 296s. This is wild. <laughs> I mean, cars of New York, pretty damn good, hey? Well, it's coming towards the end of the day now, and we've been joined by the other flak bow, the black 3.6 Turbo S, and we're going to go for a little bit of a, a sunset cruise. It has been so amazing spending time in this car today. I mean, it is just, firstly, let's get away from the from the rarity and the value. Let's talk about how nice a car it is. See, 1994, it's not the oldest 911, but I've driven a 964 Carrera RS, which often is regarded as one of the greatest modern day Porsches. But it was, why well, did I, know, this is so much more refined. This is a turbo, it is a turbo. And that's what I love about Porsche, whether you're driving a car from the 50s or 2024, the ideology is just still there. They are all somehow linked. Of course, this car is half the size of a 992 Turbo, but it just all still does the same job. When the boost kicks in in this thing, it's hectic. It's really hectic, but it's so easy, enjoyable to drive out of the boost. Just pottering around, the gearbox throw is super nice, the steering is nice, nothing's too heavy. It's such a perfect size. As I said, I cannot get over this interior. It's just a freaking beautiful car. And it all just, I mean, if I drove a 1994 Ferrari today, I'd be like, oh, that's a bit of a dog. But this thing, okay, fine. It is really the best of the best of this generation and era. But it really feels like it. It feels premium. I mean, the leather around all of the different dials here on the dashboard, the wooden trim, the gauges, it feels expensive and that's because it is and it was but then you get into what it's actually like to drive performance wise 
some out so that I wish I knew what kind of power we're talking about for these cars. But yeah, following the other car from behind, you realize how just wide the girth is on them, how big those rear tires are, the quad tailpipes. It looks unusual for a 911 in this era, almost looks aftermarket, but that's what Sonderwunsch, which became, yeah, Porsche exclusive or exclusive manufacturer, really is all about. It was an answer to the aftermarket scene because people were taking their cars to modifiers and Porsche thought, well, why are we letting them do that one? We just do it in house. And it was super popular and remains insanely popular today. Heck, I've got a paint to sample color my Porsche, which is part of the Porsche exclusive department. This the road quality, the sorry, the on road suspension, the suspension quality. It's just, I'm suddenly thinking, hey, what's like a 3.3 turbo going for these days? I kind of previously written off the 964, but this thing is so damn good, I really want one. <laughs> Isn't that the way with all of these test drives? I just want everything, don't I? I think before we drop the car back, we've got to take a brave pill, don't we? And get into that boost. <laughs> it does just suddenly pick up. <laughs> it's hilarious how it takes off. It is still progressive. It's not like a sort of F40 where it snaps out of nowhere, but it's just a switch. And the car flies out the road and it feels fast. I don't actually know how fast it would be, but oh, it feels like you need to pay attention, especially in this car because it's running Cup 2s, which feels aggressive for a car of this age. I think if you were to get into third and then fourth gear, this thing would absolutely fly. Brakes are pretty responsive as well, and there you go, that front end turning. Oh, such a really good car to drive. Days like these, days like these. You know what? This was fairly, well, I didn't know what to expect. Sometimes these are the best days I have when filming. Just going with it, seeing what happens, enjoying the experiences, and this, this is a really good one. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but how else do you sum up? driving a car like this and weather like this, having seen the cars we've seen today, met the people we've met. <laughs> oh, it takes a corner so well. I think I want a 964 Turbo. I mean, I think I want this car 